Okay, the band's back together. Sorry, Bob, you had the complete stage last week. Now Goodman's gonna be jumping in here. He's doing his college basketball tour. I mean, if you follow him on Twitter, he's the busiest man in basketball show business, no doubt. He's hard working. All right, let's get to the pros. Uh, let's talk about the Warriors right now. And I think probably right now, we could talk about them every week. Bob, I'll start with you. Their sh last year, we didn't know if they're gonna make the darn playoffs. This year, they are lighting people up. What's the difference? I'm surprised, uh, frankly. Well, one thing, Jordan Poole has really grown up, and 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 uh, I, um, he's been an instrumental. I mean, we start, all right, look, we just put Steph over here. We'll get to Steph. Steph is Steph. There's nothing new. He's as good as he's ever been. And nine threes in, in Brooklyn last night. Uh, uh, I mean, okay, so you need more than Steph, obviously. Um, and they don't have Thompson, and they don't have Weissman, and both of them will be around by sooner rather than later, I believe. And... Um, Anyway, um, Jordan Poole's been terrific. Uh, Wiggins has done some stuff that people always wanted him to do. <laughs> you know, in Minnesota, so I go, oh, why didn't you do it for us? And, um, you know, and, and Looney is, uh, people don't know that, you know, he can be effective, um, but it does start in, in, with, with, with Steph. And uh, if you had told me that they'd have a record like this, though, no, no, not at all, not without Clay, you know? And, you know, you, make, you should have wondered. Now, we don't know what he's gonna be like two years is a lock. Right. So we, it's unrealistic to think he's going to be the Clay Thompson we knew, uh, but the great ones often fool you. That's, that's, I mean, so, and I got a coach. That's what I forget that they're well coached always. Yeah. It's amazing to me. Amazing. We're talking about this team being 12 and two without Clay and without James Wiseman, who I still think is going to be a very, very good player in this league and a very good player for Golden State. But I think it's Wiggins. I honestly do. I think Wiggins, Poole's been fantastic, like you said, Bob. But I think Wiggins put up so many empty numbers in Minnesota. And now he's in a culture where it's not just about empty numbers. He's guarding. Like Andrew Wiggins always had the potential to be an elite, elite defender. And instead, he was a subpar defender because they paid him all this money uh, in Minnesota before he, he guarded. They gave him the max contract. So he's saying to himself, well, why do I have to guard? I, I just got paid $30 million a year, um, and, and I haven't guarded yet. So I think now it's being held accountable by, from the top down, Bob Myers, Steve Kerr, Draymond Green, Steph Curry. The culture is there, so no longer is Andrew Wiggins just kind of doing his thing and, and, and not being held accountable. Now it's, hey, listen, we need you to guard. You can be an elite defender. And that's the difference for me in this Golden State team is the defense as much as anything else. Yeah, well, they're they're third efficiency in defense and offense, and and uh, that that is a surprise. And I was remiss in, in not mentioning Green because, but the question last year we were wondering how much does he have left in the tank? It was there, right. there were indications that Green was fading, right? And well, uh, I think still, he just needs enough around him, Bob. I think that's the problem. The if you put Green on, he's the ultimate yeah. complementary with a need player. Right. Yes. yes. Okay. So what I wonder when I look at the standings and I see what's going on on West, you know, will will this be? Are the Warriors the face of the West and not the Lakers? Oh, until the Lakers ever get healthy, the Lakers. Yes. No, they're 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 a, still a lab experiment. They're still a a Hollywood creation. They're still a a, a circus a, in a sense, uh, you know, but not a real not not a contending team yet. Yet, who knows? It's a, they got we we all know what they're going to look like when. When uh, it, it, you know, you know, the, the three and four without LeBron as we speak, okay, uh, that makes sense, doesn't it? Makes sense to me. So yeah, yeah. I, I think they're absolutely for real now, and and nobody would have said that until Clay came back, and Clay just got cleared to start doing contact. So I think he'll be back in the next few weeks, and it'll take an adjustment. Yeah, like Bob said, he hasn't played in two years. But the great thing about Clay Thompson. He's a threat. Just just stand there at the three point line. Right. And and he's a threat and he's going to open things up. And again, you get Wiseman back. You get a freak athlete at his size who can run the court, who can finish, who can alter shots, who can block shots. Doesn't need the ball like he's exactly what Golden State to me has needed over the last few years. Maybe not needed so much, but, you know, the, the missing piece has been a big man who can just kind of finish 
and and be a force on the defensive end and really run the floor. And that's what James Wiseman is and, and what he'll be. Well, you have to wonder, guys, if the Warriors are keeping LeBron James up at night, maybe he needs to calm down. And I wonder if Bob Ryan has this particular app, Jeff Goodman, because I think over the years watching Bob Ryan watch a basketball game, he should have the calm app because LeBron James loves it. Yes, guys, here we come with a pitch from Tangway. When it comes to athletes who tend to focus on physical fitness, uh, there's another side to the game that's important. Mental fitness. Calm is the number one app for sleep and meditation. They've teamed up with LeBron James to help you train your mind and become the champion version of yourself. Calm can help you train your brain to sleep better, reduce stress, and perform at your best, just like King James. Uh, so if you head to calm.com slash subscribe for a limited time, you'll get 40% off a Calm premium subscription. Uh, with Calm, you have access to nature scenes, I'm not kidding, like rain or leaves, sleep stories. Like once upon a time, there was a young scribe from Camden, New Jersey, who went to Boston College <laughs> in one Robert Ryan. Uh, so here you go. Again, for a limited time, our listeners can join LeBron in using Calm and get a 40% discount on a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash scribe. Unlike content to help you focus, he's stress and sleep better. Get started at calm.com slash scribe. That's calm.com slash scribe. Now, we wonder if the Wizards, uh, I've never considered them for real. Jeff, I'll start with you this time around. I mean, they are on, they are the beasts of the East right now. The uh, beasts like of the, the East. <laughs> I kind of like the Warriors surprising people. Are they for real? I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. Um, I, I love, and Bob knows this. Is there anybody who likes Bradley Beal more than I like Bradley Beal, Bob? No. Only I Mrs. know that. Mom Beal, that's a big, big bad it. I mean, don't you wish you had Bradley Beal in Boston right now? Because he is winning, and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are not. So, um, to me, Bradley Beal, and I really thought by this point, Washington would be like, three and 10 instead of 10 and three. And Bradley Beal would be saying to himself, what the hell am I doing here? I want out. I want to play with that guy uh, from St. Louis, my, my, my little brother, so to speak, Jason Tatum. Instead, now they're, they're, they're rolling and Bradley Beal has been good, but Montrez Harrell has been terrific. He's kind of re reinvigorated himself after kind of a, it was not a good ending in L.A. with the Clippers, how that thing uh, finished out. And Spencer Dinwiddie, another reclamation project of sorts coming back from the injuries. So give them credit. I don't think it lasts. I think they end up being a team that, you know, is somewhere in that like six to eight range in the east. We know you don't want to make too much out of a, a hot start because I think they'll come down to earth. And a lot of it is who they played, when they played them getting, you know, certain teams without star players. That's part of it. But give them credit. They've, they've gotten off to a really good start. And not just those two guys you mentioned. They're, they're the one, uh, four key people weren't there last year. Yeah. And the other two being Kuzma, who's yeah. averaging 14 a game, yeah. and Caldwell Pope, who's averaging just under – oh, he's averaging 10, rounded off. So, and that's you know, Beal's boy, Bob. If, if you didn't know, Caldwell Pope and Beal are super, super close, like it, incredibly close. No, I so that – when that trade was made, it kind of, and Tommy Shepard, their GM, was smart because he knew that might help keep Bradley Beal in Washington long term. And then when you win, it might keep Beal even more. I mean, what, why would he leave if they're finally winning and he's got his boy, uh, you know, KCP on that team? And we remember they've got a rookie coach, too, so we don't know how that's going to play out in the long run, Wes Unsell Jr. And uh, so, but, but there, if, if the – you look in a dictionary under surprise and you'll see the Washington Wizards logo because no, you don't, you cannot show me any, tell me anybody saw this coming. No way. No, no way. I think that they're benefiting from the problems that the other teams are having. I mean, obviously, if Philadelphia is whole, right, that's a different story. They got issues there. Bob and I, we've talked about that situation last week, Jeff. And, you know, you take a look at what's going on with Brooklyn. And is there just a more unlikable situation than the Brooklyn Nets? I mean, I just sit there and I, my God, you know, I, I, I root for Steph Curry and I'm like, Durant, you blew it. You know, you might've made the wrong choice. I mean, so what's going on, you know, with, with the Nets and Kyrie, we'll get to Harden at the point guard. Is it addition by subtraction? I mean, certainly it wasn't when they took on the Warriors. Well, there, what's going on there, Jeff? 
Oh, go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't believe we're still at this point where Kyrie isn't playing, to be honest. You know, and, and I don't know if anybody cares outside of Brooklyn. I don't know if anybody cares anymore because the Nets are still they've, – they've done pretty well, and I give James Harden a ton of credit. I did not think he could do this. I did not think he could pull it off and say, I'm going to be a point guard, not a scorer. I don't have to average 30 a game. But because Jeff, he sorry, could. Didn't we see this happen last year when he first arrived? Yeah, we did. But, we talked about it too. But I thought it was to prove a point. I didn't think it could it, it could be a long-term thing. I thought it was just, hey, everybody's killing me because I forced my way out of Houston. I'm going to show everybody I'm a team guy. And I'm going to do it for a small period of time. And then I'm going to revert back, especially without Kyrie. I'm going to revert back to who I am, which is a guy that needs to get 30 every single night because I can. And instead, again, give him credit. I've seen this, this guy play for now, I don't know, 15 years. And I, I, I never thought he could be this. I thought he was just so wired to score that he couldn't be that distributor um, that he's been so far this year. And they've done well without Kyrie again. Who else do they have? They got two dudes. And what else? Harris, when he's making the shots fall, yeah. which they didn't when they needed him last year when it happened. Right. After he had a good year, he had a bad post postseason. Yeah, there isn't a whole lot there. Well, it leads you back to Durant and his MVP credentials. And sure. though he had a rare off night last night, six for 19, uh, he's having a phenomenal year. And there's an excellent breakdown of exactly what he's doing in today's New York Times, today being the 17th of November, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, the mid-range game. Of course, that gladdens my heart, of yes. course, that they're that. Uh, oh, you love this. But the numbers are phenomenal on his mid-range game. And you know, reminding people that there is a place for it still in the game, no matter what Daryl Morey says. And and uh, anyway, he, he is he's as good as he's ever been. And and uh, you know, last night notwithstanding. So you know, it, it's but yeah, that's what I say. But I, I agree with everything about. We all seem to be on the same page with Harden. Well, what, no what one told us all a year ago today that James Harden would play the nature of the game that he's been playing <laughs> uh, the, in the last year. We would not have said that's ah, not going to happen. Well, it is happening, yeah. and and uh, I, I don't want to like him. He's averaging under twenty points a game. Yeah, he's third in assists. He's got eight assists a game. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't want to find myself rooting for him, but I, I I have to begrudgingly give him credit for what he's doing. I'll, I'll give well, him Bob, this is what this is what I think proves is that look, basketball is yeah. not a complicated game. You know, when guys want to do this, they can. You know, that's what they can. They all can do it. When they all want to distribute the basketball, when Jalen Brown wants to distribute the basketball, Tatum or Marcus Smart wants to not, we've seen it. It's just, they all can do it. It's yeah, just but a, it's a different way. Listen, th there, there's different levels of distributing the basketball. And to me, James Harden has the ability to make guys like LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin look like they've found the fountain of youth because he gets so much attention. Marcus Smart can't, he doesn't see the game right, right, the way okay. James Harden does. I got you. You know, like, and James Harden doesn't see the game the way John Stockton did. Right. Right? I mean, that that's that's kind of the varying levels to me of point guard is James Harden attracts so much attention that there are guys open at all times. And, and, and obviously, KD has the attention, too. So these other guys, the Bruce Browns, the Marcus Aldridge's, even the Joe Harris's who can shoot the hell out of the ball, they're, they're one of them is going to be wide open every play. And all you have to do is like you're saying, Garrett, make the right play. If you're James Harden and he is a smart enough player to be able to do that consistently. You mentioned Aldridge and there's been a, a rebirth in his play. Yeah. You know, for sure. And, uh, and uh, you know, that he's been, he's been part of the whole story why they've, why they've done well. Okay. Now, uh, we were just talking about how the Nets don't necessarily aren't they, they don't need Kyrie. And I remember last year, I thought the reason Kyrie came back from his going MIA was because Harden was playing so well. Uh, one of the things we've seen, Jeff, over the years in the NBA is guys asking out. Uh, we thought that Giannis may try to get his shoot his way out of Milwaukee. He obviously doesn't want to leave. You know, so who's the next guy to do it? You know, I, I thought Brad Beal. I thought Peel was going to be there, but obviously uh, that's not going to happen yet. And I don't know if it's going to happen, period, this year with, with Washington winning. We'll see. 
you know, I think the two guys that you got to watch, right, Bob, are, are Carl Anthony Towns in Minnesota. I think he's certainly a candidate. Um, and Damian Lillard in Portland. Yeah. You know, both those guys are struggling right now. Minnesota has struggled. There's really no expectations there. And I could see Carl Anthony Towns going back closer to home. Ultimately, the Knicks are the place that everybody talks about um, because, again, he, he grew up in New Jersey. You know, could he go back home, especially with everything he's had to deal with from a personal front uh, with losing family members? Does he want to get a little bit closer to home? Um, and Lillard, listen. Portland should be better. I mean, it, it just feels like it's kind of mediocrity every year to some degree. You know, they kind of they rise a little bit, but ultimately they're just kind of spinning their wheels and they're not a true contender in a year. So I think that's going to be one that you've got to watch is does Dame finally say, you know what, I've given everything I got in Portland. We don't have enough around me in terms of, you know, other than me and CJ. That's that's pretty much it at this point. If we're going to look at the, uh, the uh, you know the, the tableau about who these guys are in terms of the franchise that they're with and what the expectations are and what the, the history is and all that, um, there's a name I'm just throwing it out there. Not that this this I'm not starting anything here. I'm simply saying some and within a couple of years, if things don't hit a, a higher level, John ja Morant. Ooh, look at you already. Wow. I'm thinking yeah, about I'm because this is the way I, I the world we're living in. I'm just yeah. blowing it. I could see a scenario in 2024 if they haven't done anything where, where you know, he's that type of guy. That's all. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. I'm trying to identify possibilities down the road. That's but yeah, that's, I think that's, that's what that's, that's, I think we're talking about. Some of these other guys. I mean, because Memphis, you know, Memphis has been a, yeah. a blah franchise. Okay, guys. Uh, in other news, uh, Mike Krzyzewski's in a bit of a jam. Uh, his grandson, Mike Severino, who's on the team, was in a car with Paolo Banchero. And I guess when the cops stopped him, there was suspicion of OUI, Jeff. And then they did the old Peru. So Paolo, Paolo wouldn't get busted. What's going on? Well, so, you know, we're still, I think, in the gathering mode here a little bit. But, yeah, it was, it was early in the morning, Sunday morning. And the police pulled over uh, Severino and Banchero. And Severino, as you said, is Kay's grandson on the team was a walk on and Ben Caro might be the number one overall pick in next year's NBA draft. And they hit uh, Severino with a DWI. He was driving or in the driver's uh, seat at that point. Ben Caro was in the back seat, but he's got to go to court too. Bob, you could go ahead. Aiding and abetting is the technical term, which uh, it implies that he should have stopped the the impaired driver or or, or never allowed him to start. And he he's intentionally involved. That you know, as if that's that is the charge. The whole thing is weird. It was Ben Caro's car. It was Ben Caro's car, and that's I mean, that's it, part it, of it. It's crazy. What do they do? First of all, you know. What, what kind of common sense? What are they doing out at 1.20 in the morning? College kids. When we hear these things about a pro athlete, we just yawn and say, hey, remember the old thing? Nothing good happens after midnight or nothing good happens after 2 a.m. It's for sure. And and you don't really think about it in terms of con the fact is who it is makes this a story. You know, if this were uh, McNeese State or Eastern Michigan, nobody would give a damn. And and it's it's Mike Krzyzewski's team and it's Mike Krzyzewski's farewell tour, which has already started and a team with which could go a long way. We both know that, and, and and people are going to find that out. And meanwhile, the, the uh, our, our, our propriety and, and, and the optics, as people like to say, aren't very good when he allows Mike, uh, Paolo Bancaro to play last night, 26 minutes in their latest game over College of Charleston. Uh, that doesn't, to me, look very good either. And he was very defensive when I heard a, a soundbite this morning about, uh, about, you people don't understand there's two different things going on here. Then he didn't explain specifically what, what he's exactly what he's talking about. We're going to learn a lot more, right? Next time we convene, we'll have learned a lot more about it. All I say is, what a mess. It's a well, mess. Well, here, here's my biggest question. Is, is this like driving Miss Daisy? Yeah, where where this... Severino's driving and Ben Caro's in the backseat? I don't know. That doesn't add up to me, Bob. First, first thing I, I thought of. Doesn't I'm not make any sense. I'm naive, but I'm not that naive. Doesn't make any sense. So what's anyway, going on here? There's uh, something know, more to this. I don't know, oh, man. It's, Uber. It's, it's, Uber. When have you driven? Listen. When is the last time you've driven in the back seat, right, of when your wife is driving 
when a friend is driving in, in an Uber, yes. And, and these kids, they have Uber now. Take Uber. Take Uber. And then you don't have to worry about this. But what is, you know, I'm, I'm, I sound like I know it, but, you know, the, the 120 in the morning, college doesn't sound very good to me. Anyway, this is Duke. And Duke's a polarizing school. It's a Notre Dame of basketball. People love them or hate them. And, and um, all the enemies are probably all shortling. And, and uh, uh, it is a mess. And of all timing things, and, and Coach K's, the focus is already on him more than ever because of the last year thing, the, tour, the farewell tour, which, you know, I saw convened in New York last Tuesday night. Jeff did too. We both did. And, and um, you know, all we go, oh, it, there's a lot more to, to come. That's all I can say. All right, guys, that'll do it for this week's edition of the Ryan and Goodman uh, with Tangway Pod. Uh, thank you very much. And portions of the show brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, small business owners are busier than ever. And spending time searching for the right candidates can feel like you're just taking time away from your growing business. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 777 million people. LinkedIn Jobs help you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job free at LinkedIn.com slash scribe. That's LinkedIn.com slash scribe. Like Bob Ryan's book, Scribe. You can post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, gentlemen, thanks a lot. Appreciate it, boys. Thank you.